Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect and After Effects Explained, we're going to be going over the expression controls effects. So if you're not familiar with expressions, it's basically a way for you to add some sort of scripted or mathematical operation on any parameter of your clip. So for example, if I have this rose shape here that I made in Photoshop, now you can always change things, like you can change the scale to be whatever size you want. And you can always add keyframes like in any other editing program by adding the stopwatch icon, adding a keyframe, and then let's say moving along and changing something. So we can make an animation where this rose gets slightly bigger. But expressions in After Effects, if we hold Option or Alt, and click on that keyframe, allow us to add a mathematical operation onto whatever kind of animation we want. So there's actually a lot, and if you don't know them all off the top of your head, there's this little drop down menu which gives you some good starting off points. For example, one property we can add is wiggle. So we can do something like wiggle one frequency, five amplitude. And you see this kind of adds like a little wiggly jello animation on it which we don't have to create with keyframes and that brings us to our expression controls which is an additional way for us to even control these effects and keyframe them and things like that so let's create a new layer and you can technically add expression controls on any layer but i'm just going to create a new adjustment layer in this case just kind of a blank layer for me to make the control layer. So if I add something like angle control onto the adjustment layer, this will bring up this angle control and it's just a simple slider UI. Just lets us adjust the angle. But the cool part is we can link any parameter or expression to this rotation slider. So for example, if I had all three of these flowers, if I take this rose and I go to the rotation parameter, I can actually take the pick whip and I can link it to that effect. So let me make sure I can see the actual effect. I can drop it down here or make sure that layer is active. And I can drag the pick whip onto the angle slider. Now what this does is it allows me to use this angle control to adjust that parameter, in this case the rotation. And you might be thinking that's a complicated way to just, I could have just adjusted it there. But the cool part is you can take more than one thing and link it back to the same controller. So let's say I want to do that for all three of the flowers. So I'll link all three of the rotation of the flowers to the angle controller. Now I've essentially made a flower rotator control and I can rotate all of the flowers together without having to do one by one. And I can even add animations or expressions onto this controller itself. So you can quickly get an idea how much flexibility and advanced options you really can have when you can point things at each other and link them all and stack them on top of each other. A few of the other expression controls we have are slider controls. This just gives us a basic slider from zero to whatever number. So in this case, let's say we linked the scale to the slider. You could change the slider amount from zero and it would change the scale of whatever you have but there's so many different ways that you could use these numbers together. Another one we have is point control. So this allows us to use an X and Y coordinate and link it with something else. So an anchor point or position maybe. So for example, if I linked the position transform effect onto the point control of the adjustment layer on all of these, you'll see them all take on the X and Y position of the point controller and then the point controller controls everything. Now this might be a case where instead of directly linking the actual parameter, you link an expression of it. So I don't want them all stacked on top of each other, for example, but I still want to be able to control them all at once. In this case, I'd want to hold Option or Alt, create an expression for the position, and do something like link it to that point control, but also plus the value or the original value. And in this case, since I added an expression plus value, it's adding the original value back on to our point. And now we can just adjust that point and 
all of the three flowers will still maintain their kind of original separation or spacing of each other. But you can get an idea of how you can start to problem solve in After Effects by having more tools at your disposal and using the right math and addition to get to the things to do what you want them to do. Going along with that, we also have 3D point controller. This is for 3D layers, which also have a Y axis on them. So it's same idea. Now they're not all just sliders and dials. Another cool one we have is layer control. So if I add a layer control directly onto this rose layer, it'll allow me to control things about this layer based on the parameters of another layer. So right now it's not doing anything because we need to add or link an expression. So if we go to the position, I'll add an expression saying to link this to this layer control. So now it just gives us this effect layer control layer, but we haven't told it what to do. So it's linked, but it doesn't know for what. In this case, let's do dot transform. So we want it to transform and we want it to use the position. So now it'll take whatever layer and it'll transform this position based on that one. So in this case, it's currently on the rose layer. It's not doing anything, but I can take it to this number one layer and it'll put it there. I can take it to this number two layer. It'll put it there and it's just taking the X and Y position of those text layers and putting this on there. And the more you know, you can continue to add different mathematical expressions and add things at the end of that. So you can use these basic starting points plus tweak them with more math. Another useful one is the color control. So in this case, if I'm working with a layer that has some sort of color checkbox picker, for example, this background that I have, I can link any of the color checkboxes to the color control. So let's say I want to change the general midtone of this image. I can take this midtone pick whip or whichever ones I want and link them to the color control. And now I have the color control here, which I can change to whatever color I want. And from here, you can even add expressions or keyframes onto your controllers or sliders as well. And you can create a panel or one layer where you have all the master controls for several multi-composited layers or throughout different compositions, all at your fingertips on one layer. Now, another cool expression control we have is the checkbox control. If I drag this onto the adjustment layer, this gives us a checkbox, which we can either turn on or off. And what value this gives After Effects is either a zero or a one. So if it's off, it returns a zero. If it's on, it will return a one. And that can come in handy when we're dealing with expressions. So for example, under the rows PNG, if I create an expression for the opacity and I link that value using the pick whip tool onto that checkbox control, it'll give me either a zero or a one. So you'll see that when the checkbox is turned off, it's zero. When it's turned on, it'll be 1%. Now, obviously, opacity works on zero to 100% scale. So there's lots of ways that we can get around this. One is I can just use a multiplication sign. Remember, it's the star, not an X. And I can times it by its original value. In this way, we're just going to kind of create a checkbox. If it's off, it'll turn the opacity to zero because zero times anything is zero. And if it's on, it'll return its own original opacity because one times whatever it was. Now that might seem like a really fancy way to have just created a visibility layer, which it was. However, you can take it further with more math. Like this gets as flexible as you are knowledgeable and advanced in coding. And After Effects has some basic starting points for you once you learn how the operators kind of work. For example, if I was to wrap this whole expression in an if-else statement, instead of using the multiplication trick, I could do something like if parentheses this whole checkbox equals one, which means it's turned on, then set the value to 75%, else set it to 25%. So in this way, with a little bit of coding knowledge, 
what I've done is created a checkbox between 75 or 25 percent. So if I go to the adjustment layer, it's off right now, so we're getting 25 percent. But if I turn it on, we're getting 75 percent. So you can quickly see how this can be valuable beyond just how your normal visibility tool is. If you know a little bit of code and learn some different tricks and operators, you can get really specific and create tons of linked effects that all switch each other on and off. So in this case, kind of like a slight opacity checkbox, which could then trigger something else, which could all tie together somehow. Lastly, one that we haven't touched on yet is the drop down menu control. And this just gives us sample items like item one, two, and three. We can even edit to add more items. And we can use these items as kind of like more than just a checkbox. This will return one, this will return two, three, four, and etc. So for example, if I was to do that same expression, except this time I'll link the opacity to the drop down menu control. So link it to that drop down menu. In this case, item one you'll see returns 1%, item two returns 2%, and so on. And so this gives you kind of like unlimited checkbox options or unlimited different values that you could then assign to do different things. And if I added a little bit of operators or statements to this, let's say times 10, we basically create a 10% increase in opacity based on each increase in item. So one is 10%, 20%, 30, 40, and that's a really basic example, maybe something that you won't be rushing to do all the time. But the more code and operations that you know, the more you can make these controls do exactly what you want and do all types of creative problem solving with them. If you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to my channel. I'm going over all of the effects folder by folder. And in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the generate effects. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.